Much-loved comedian has died at the age of 90. Described by his publicist as one of the last music hall greats, Sir Ken was known for his marathon stage performances and the creation of the Diddy Men and the Tickling Stick. The performer from Liverpool had recently spent six weeks in hospital with a chest infection. On Friday, he married his partner of 40 years, Anne Jones. Caroline Davis looks back at his life. <laughs> Tickling sticks and diddy men, Ken Dodd was a variety performer with a gift for the surreal. What a beautiful day for going up to Count von Zeppelin and saying, you'll never sell a sausage that size. <laughs> and the love of a catchphrase or three. How tickled I am, how tickled I am by all this goodwill. <clears throat> what about you, missus? Have you been tickled by goodwill? Nick knocking, nick knock, nicky knocking, nick knock, nick knocking, nick knock, nicky knocking. Proud of his Merseyside roots, the coal merchant's son from Naughty Ash became a chart-topping singer, a TV star and a ventriloquist. <laughs> Although silly on stage, Dodd was serious about his craft. Freud said that a laugh is a sudden uh, explosion of psychic energy. <clears throat> of course, the trouble with Freud was he never played second house Friday night at Glasgow Empire. <laughs> He still lived in the home he grew up in and guarded his private life carefully. In 1989, that was shattered when he faced charges of massive tax evasion. He had 20 offshore bank accounts and more than £300,000 hidden around his house. He was acquitted and continued performing. Last year, he was given a knighthood in recognition of his charity and comedy work. We shall have one or two glasses of tickle tonic. And then uh, we shall go back to Nottyash, uh, up north, Nottyash on Merseyside, and uh, I shall see the Diddy men there, so I'll give your regards to them. Age 90, Dodd was recently hospitalised with a chest infection, but he still wanted to go back on stage. Hey, I look forward to uh, uh, getting back to doing the job, well, the only job that I've ever had, the only job that I know. After more than 60 years of making others laugh, it was performing to the British public that Dodd said gave him enormous happiness. Well, the legend that was uh, Sir Ken Dodd. Uh, to look back at his life with me is the writer and broadcaster Matthew Sweet, who has interviewed the late star on many occasions. Welcome, Matthew. And There's you the evidence a tickling stick. in front of you, yes. From the man himself. From the man himself, yes. Yeah. yes. So and that's been seen action, that tickling stick. <laughs> What was he like to interview? Did he take, ever take himself seriously? Well, actually, I mean, you heard him talking about Freud in yeah. that clip. And although he didn't, you had to encourage him, I think, into that kind of discussion about himself. He was very well versed in the history and the theory of comedy. He could talk to you about Freud and jokes and their relationship with the unconscious. He could talk about the theories of Henri Bergson. So he'd done all the reading. And he was also, he tapped into the very deep history of British comedy, so that when you saw him, you knew you were on a kind of continuum. He was passing something on that he'd seen in the 30s and the 40s. And, and really, that's why he's the end of an era. That's why he's out, the breaking of a link with a very deep old tradition of comedy. And, and obviously, he was a star at a time when the options for what you could watch and receive were much more limited. So it meant that the stars of those times were, in many cases, much bigger than, than often might happen today. Well, he was born into the era of variety, which mm. has vanished. So every, every town and city had the, the kind of theatre where, where Ken Dodd would be, would be seen performing. But he was also a beneficiary of television as well and became a star in that era and a recording star as well. I mean, he sold more records than the Rolling Stones or, or the Spice. <laughs> Girls, only the Beatles can touch him in the it's, 60s. I know when I read that statistic, he his single Tears was the third highest selling song of the 60s yeah. in Britain, only beaten by two Beatles yeah. singles. Yeah. That is an yeah. extraordinary and thing he had, to have you know, under your he belt. had a beautiful voice as well. And he sang, you know, the singing was part of the shows mm. right right until the end, very important part of it. I once saw he did something very spooky in a way. He would he would he would he would throw out a line to the audience. And the audience would sing it back to him. And it was almost like he was sort of getting a measure of who was in the room, how old they were, what their background was, what their experiences were. Mm. He had an incredible rapport with audiences. I, we're going to try to bring in, do stay with us, Matthew, but I think we can talk now to Cathy Roberts and Peter Grant. They run a bookshop in New Brighton that was opened by Sir Ken Dodd six years ago. He was a friend and patron of the shop 
thank you for joining us. I think we've got a little bit of trouble on the line, but I'm hoping we can have a quick chat. I see you've got a tickling stick as well. <laughs> so tell us then what, what your relationship was with him. Well, Peter's been a friend for many, many years. Um, when we opened five years ago, Doddy came and opened it for us. He's always been our patron. He came dressed as, Ken Do uh, as um, <sighs> Charles Dickens and did uh, Christmas Carol storytelling. And we were looking forward to seeing him again next month to read from Wind in the Willows. We even had a present for him, which is this. And these are... Oh, we're having trouble with the line. Unfortunately, um, we can't see what the present was, but we'll try to fix it and go back to it. Oh, it's back, I'm hearing. Here we go. Yeah. Let's, let's take it. Hey, hey, hey there. Sorry, we, we lost you for a moment, but you were just saying, uh, Kathy, you've got a present for... Well, you had a present for him, and there it is. So he loved jesters. Um, he was, as you probably know, extremely well-read, a massive um, historian of comedy, and he particularly loved jesters. So we had this for him, which is all oh, about 60 years old, but um, we miss him terribly. The, he was an incredibly generous man with us, wasn't he, Pete? He was, and uh, I asked him how he would like to be remembered. This is going back a couple of months, and he said just one word, jester. And it's a very sad day on both sides of the Mersey today because our bookshop's in New Brighton, and he was loved by everybody. Merseyside loved him, and he loved us back. Oh, thank you both very much. Um, the, the word jester, Matthew, that they're talking about, I mean, that, I guess that, that is exactly what it's he It's absolutely what he appropriate. Was. And when Kenneth Branagh made his version of Hamlet, yeah. he cast Ken Dodd as Yorick in a flashback. So we see the skull, and then we go back into Hamlet's childhood, and we see him on his back, just as Hamlet describes him. So he was absolutely plugged into, into that history. And there's something, I mean, there's something fascinating and wonderful about the fact that he occupies uh, that space. That, you know, he, he was kind of Yorick to all of us, in a way. And now he's, now he's gone, uh, he's, he's sort of part of all of our pasts and our histories. Thank you very much, Matthew. That's Matthew Sweet and uh, also, also Cathy Roberts. And OK, we're going to move on now to other news. And the widow of Sir Ken Dodd echoed the sentiments of millions of his fans today, describing him as life-enhancing, brilliant and creative. The veteran comedian died yesterday at the home where he was born 90 years ago in the Liverpool suburb of Naughty Ash. Sir Ken was known for his epic stand-up shows, his tickling sticks and diddy men, as well as his unexpectedly beautiful singing voice. Sir Paul McCartney was among the many paying tribute today. Damon Green is outside Sir Ken's home tonight. Damon. Well, this is Naughty Ash, and if you've ever heard of this part of Liverpool, it might well be because of Ken Dodd. He always lived here. He never moved away. He was born here. He grew up here. The house behind me is where he was married to his long-term partner a couple of days ago, and it was the house where yesterday he died. Ken Dodd made people laugh in every single corner of this country, but this was the place that he loved. This was the place where people loved him. There was nobody like him, nobody who could do the things he did for such a long, long lifetime on the stage. And today, the sad news announced by his partner of 40 years, the woman known in his home city of Liverpool as Lady Anne, and who married him just days before he died. I have lost a most wonderful husband. We first met when I was in the Ken Dodd Christmas show in 1961 at the Manchester Opera House. I've had the supreme joy and privilege of working and living with him as partner for the past 40 years. The world has lost a most life-enhancing, brilliant, creative comedian with an operatically trained voice who just wanted to make people happy. My dad knew I was going to be a comedian when I was a baby. She said, is this a joke? <laughs> <laughs> I was a bottle baby. Then one day I pushed the cork out and escaped. <laughs> he told jokes for a living because he loved to make people laugh and everyone who ever met him came away feeling that they'd made a friend. In the Liverpool suburb of Notty Ash, where he lived his entire life, he was adored. He had something to say to everybody, and his legacy, his biggest legacy, is nobody will ever think of the name Ken Dodd without a smile on the face, and that's the sadness.
he's left us he's given everybody happiness and he's left us with sadness we used to drive past here all the time when i was younger and my mum always used to go there's a diddy man and there's ken dodd's house and we'd have to wave going past in the car he done a lot round here for everyone he stood by the school he stood by people he was a wonderful man so Kenneth Dodd for services to enter last year he received a knighthood in recognition of his lifetime's work even at 90 he would stay on stage for hours for his adoring fans for fellow professionals and inspiration he gave me his time which is the most precious thing a man of his status when I was a 14 year old kid he used to take me on his shows I'd be a support and act and my mum and dad would be there and he'd sit and talk to me for hours about the business and advice People never laugh you now some people have no sense of humor there are some people who are devoid why the hell they all have to turn up in one lump <laughs> His good humour was legendary, but so was his kindness. When admitted to hospital just weeks ago, he remembered to thank those who treated him. You, you really are the tops. Thank you so much for all your kindness, your consideration, and of course your skill. Few people have ever brought a smile to so many faces over such a long, long life. And his contribution to this country's happiness will never be forgotten. Oh, Britain says Tatty by then to Sir Ken Dodd, who's died at the age of 90.